Ready, Boo? It's time to look at Disney's greatest movie botch-ups. While Disney movies have helped shape our world as long as cartoons have existed, for every 10 good Disney movies, there's one really bad one. For a movie to make this list, it has to be more than just a mediocre Disney flick. It has to be annoying, insultingly stupid, sickly sweet, or just plain bad. No! In our onslaught of Disney bombs, director DVDs will not be spared. If Disney's logo's on it, it's allowed on this list. So let's take a look back at the top 10 worst Disney movies of all time. As always, if you do like these shows, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion, and it's great that you can enjoy something that I can't. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10, Mulan 2. Oh. Man, I loved the original Mulan. It's among my favorite Disney movies of all time. I know it wasn't that aesthetically perfect, but I always just got so absorbed in the Chinese atmosphere, the setting, the characters. Mulan's struggle, I really liked it all. So it really hit me hard when I watched Mulan 2. Take all that character development from Mulan and Mushu. Now, turn Mushu into the most petty, tiny brain, shallow, selfish creature, and that's it. This time, Mushu's our villain, because he's trying to keep Mulan and Shang apart from marrying. I haven't left my post. And I suppose you weren't gossiping about me with the princesses. Oh, jeepers. Are we really going this route? Surely we can come up with a better premise than this. Here, I'll do one for you right now. Why not bring that ruthless Hun Shan Yu back as a ghost? Then, Shan possesses the Emperor and forces all of China into a state of moral disarray and public unrest, forcing children to question the very foundation of the positive morals Disney films so often invoke. Okay, I got a bit carried away, but you probably get my point. Any of us can come up with a much more compelling sequel in 10 seconds than Mulan 2. Surely, the champion of China, who single-handedly defeated an entire Hun army by herself, and was offered to be the freaking emperor's personal guard, would have a slightly more interesting story than this. The only thing I kind of liked was seeing Mulan's three army buddies return. They get these lovely girlfriends who are just the sweetest things. Paddle, oh, look how great you're doing. Thank you. Couldn't they have made this movie about these three couples? It's far more enjoyable to watch them. Mulan 2 is a tragically bad sequel to one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. And the songs. Oh god, the songs. And for number 9, Teen Beach Movie. Imagine the Jonas Brothers, High School Musical, and Justin Bieber all mashed together into one 90-minute unholy vile tween mush. That is the Teen Beach Movie. I'm Tanner, Sea Cat, Giggles. Ah, how many pandering teen dramas is Disney gonna pump out? I can just read the plot summary and that alone makes me groan. Two surfing lovers whose doomed relationship is nearing to a close find themselves magically in a filming of West Side Story. This movie makes no attempt to make sense. All it managed to do was make me squirm in discomfort for 90 minutes. At least Shake It Up was over in 20 minutes. I had to take pee breaks with this one, followed by crying in the mirror over the sad state of modern entertainment. And the movie will just randomly burst into song, seemingly for no rhyme or reason, other than to desperately attempt to fill a 90 minute runtime with some flashy dancing and something they hope the teens will relate to. You should make like the ocean and wave goodbye. <laughs> oh. You should make like the ocean and wave goodbye. I've heard some dumb jokes before, but that is really, really stupid. And the music scenes just keep going. I mean, most of the teens I know would only enjoy this if each of these guys was getting kicked in the groin or in a skateboard accident. This one's pretty high on the list because, honestly, the main two teen actors aren't terrible. They're not great. But Brady and Mackenzie are still a lot better than a lot of the Disney Channel teen acting. Teen Beach movie just 
reeks of so many stereotypes. It just feels like one of those big massive marketing conglomerates. And I think I can definitely recommend a skip it. Someone won't you make it stop? Number 8 Mars Needs Mums. <laughs> oh god, what the hell is that? This CG isn't endearing, it's terrifying. This movie has some of the most disturbing looking CG I've ever seen. In fact, it's so squarely in the uncanny valley that the aliens actually look more like humans than the Earthlings do. Yes! 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 Ah! Stop moving! Any movements in these bizarre organisms look like something out of a David Lynch horror movie. They look like waxy, dead-eyed mannequins come to life by satanic rituals. And the scripting in this is just some of the most sterile, dull, cut-out lines I've ever heard. I don't know if it's just the animation doing it, but the delivery coming from these abominations of nature just seems wrong somehow. A world of trash! What? A world of trash? It... How is a world of trash in any way awesome? That's the most forced whimsical line in this entire movie. It's, it's not even whimsical. Why is there whimsical music playing? He looks like he's standing in the fires of hell. How is this even remotely whimsical? Did no one in the Disney production studio ever look at what they were making and say, Hey, this CG looks like it belongs in a zombie horror. Maybe we should just do it live action. Most of the backgrounds are these ugly, crap-colored browns, greens, or are so dark you can't actually make out what you're meant to be looking at. This one's also pretty high on the list because despite the disturbing uncanny CG, the ideas behind things like the alien civilization are kind of creative. I mean, the movie's surreal, nonsensical, and is better used as a paperweight, but points for trying. The story's painfully predictable, any whimsy is forced down your throat, and the characters are all as bland as tofu. And it is just hideous to look at! Mars Needs Mums wasn't needed by anyone. And the seventh worst is... Beauty and the Beast. Belle's Magical World. I think they meant to name it Belle and Beast Mind-Numbingly Stupid Dinner Quarrels, but I guess Belle's Magical World rolls off the tongue a little bit better. Get this amazing plot. Beast acts like a petty jerk and upsets Belle at the dinner table. I'm hyped. While the original Beauty and the Beast is among probably the three greatest Disney movies of all time, this sequel just repeatedly shat on it. And the arguments these two have are just so brainlessly petty and stupid. I will never apologize! I think... Beast opened a drafty window to try and get rid of Belle or something, and then Belle called Beast rude, I think? I swear there have been more intelligent partner quarrels with Barbie and Ken dolls. So then they forgive each other when Beast writes a letter of an apology. Then literally two seconds after, Belle gets annoyed at Beast for crunching peanuts too loud. Then drew herself up courageously for the... Journey ahead. Do you like it so far? Mm, yes. Keep breathing. Do something! No, I just can't. Ah, I'm only 10 minutes in, too. There's another 80 minutes left of this thing. Oh, then it turns out Beast didn't write the letter and apologize. Oh god, it, it just keeps going like this, doesn't it? As well as that, the animation looks like it was done on a two cent budget. Belle's magical world is stupid, awkward, tedious beyond belief, and craps on one of the greatest Disney movies of all time. It is so insultingly petty and simplistic that I find the original movie less good after watching this. Then I think the duster gets seasonal affective disorder and Belle decides to throw it a party? Resulting in talking oven gloves? Oh jeebus, I can't take it anymore! Light it up! And for number six... Home on the Range. Ugh. Walt must be spinning in his grave. Where to start with this vile thing? The animation is tacky, and the writing could only be appreciated by those who can't count past two on their fingers. 
Every aspect of this show will be unappealing in some way to those over four. It took me right back to that traumatic place that was Fanboy and Chum Chum, where they've made no effort to make coherent writing. The characters are all just that sickly, happy, insincere flavor. It's just, ugh. This was one I knew from the start would, of course, be on the list. I can't think of how Disney could have lowered the bar further apart from making an outright Barney the Dinosaur movie. And they actually had some real voice talents in here. And the odd thing is, it has some scenes that really aren't suitable for its young child demographic. A horse causes massive head trauma to a guy, and he draws a freaking knife. Cause that's a good message to children. When you're in danger, draw a knife. Generally when I hear people talk about this show, they tend to call this the big decline in Disney movies. This was when Disney movies were their absolute worst. And that's definitely understandable. Home on the Range is just lazy, and is far below what we've come to expect from Disney. Yeah, they're real. Quit staring. And for number five, Planes. One of the biggest shameless cash grabs Disney has ever done. A movie has to be a very special kind of failure to be a cash grab spin-off of a cash grab sequel cash grab. When Disney saw how profitable thoughtless garbage like Cars 1 and 2 had made Pixar, they thought, screw our reputation. Let's make a crappy movie purely to sell merchandise. I mean, it's only kids, right? What do they know? The absolute best phrase I've heard for this movie is, it's a passable diversion for under 10s. This movie is just so void of originality. And the concept is just so stupid. They're just talking planes. There's no cleverness behind why they talk or how they talk. They just talk. And our hero is a plane that is afraid of heights. Well, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think he's gonna believe in himself and magically manage to get over his fear of heights? Is there anything else that could possibly happen in this predictable garbage heap? The only plus is, as you've probably noticed, it's visually pleasing in that artificial CG overly shiny toys kind of way. It was almost like they were designing it to market toys to children rather than actually make a good movie. I'd expect this kind of cash grab from Michael Bay, but we tend to expect more of an animation studio that has nearly a century old and prides itself on making amazing family movies. The characters just talk and talk endlessly. Really? How hard is this? Fly straight, turn around, fly straight. <laughs> if I tune out from boredom from listening to these guys as an adult, how is someone under 10 not meant to be kicking the seat in front of them 30 seconds in? The plot is as weak as water. The lines and writing are as dull as dishwater. It's purely a bland loaf of tofu that was interesting only to under 10s, purely for its colorful visuals. And the fourth worst is... G-Force. Bad CG guinea pigs and fart jokes surrounded by endless pop culture references, all under the banner of Disney. Every single bad fart joke just falls flat on its face. Some shoddy movies will insert whatever flavor of the month pop singer is popular at the time into their movies. G-Force does this over 13 times. Every time I think I'm getting slightly immersed in this movie, some annoying pop singer jars the experience by breaking into song out of nowhere, often singing right over the top of the actual characters. I go to Disney movies to escape the mainstream obsession with Lady Gaga and Flo Rida. Couldn't they have spent some of that $150 million budget on their own orchestrated music? Or did it all go into royalties to Flo Rida? Everything in G-Force feels like it's ticking some box for the shareholders to assure it appeals to mainstream. Look, the guinea pig's playing DDR. That was popular in 2005, right? Look, that guinea pig's on Facebook. That's, that's popular, right? This is just Disney's outright equivalent to Smurfs or Alvin and the Chipmunks. And it's so obnoxiously loud. Half the time the guinea pigs will be yelling about something and it'll be so generic I won't even notice what they're saying. I'll just feel more annoyed afterwards for some reason. Get on the road, fool! I used to stick! Come back with your older and put you in prison! 
G-Force has unlikable characters, is annoying, and feels like a corporate scheme to empty your wallet. It represents all the Alvin and the Chipmunks, all those damned Smurf movies. It is just a watered down, annoying computer graphics garbage heap. And for number three, Inspector Gadget 2. Blah! I'm convinced. Someone in Disney is clearly working for DreamWorks, because movies like this just seem to be made purely to sabotage the company. The original Inspector Gadget movie was panned for being a drab load of bile. The effects were terrible, the main character gave an incredibly dull performance, and the story made no sense. It was just a mess. So they decided to make a sequel, because they thought, Hey, our last movie was only boring. Let's make this one both boring and insulting. Let's make it actively assault all the senses of our viewers at once. Instead of Matthew Broderick, let's have French Stewart, responsible for such stellar Disney performances as the Chihuahua from Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. Yet somehow this movie still managed to be the biggest coffee stain in his resume. Remember kids? Fresh twice a day! What did the director say to this guy? Okay, listen up, French. By the time this movie ends, the audience should hate you. And I mean absolutely despise you. So we start the movie with French pulling over an old lady for going 0.3 miles per hour over the speed limit. Jeesh, what a charming guy. Then he forcefully handcuffs her. Penny, I thought we agreed you'd call me Inspector. Oh, look at that. He's sticking his nose up at Penny, telling her he must refer to him by his rank. What a lovable, relatable character. Inspector Gadget 2 is a loud, irritating, unlikable, relentless, seizure-inducing, ugly fest that wasn't just forgettable like the original. It topped the original by being insultingly obnoxious as well. Luckily for Disney, it was quickly forgotten. And for number two, Hannah Montana the movie. No! I hate Hannah Montana so much. Imagine all the garbage of Disney Channel. All the lousy teen acting, all the terrible writing, all the tweeny bop songs, all the formulaic manipulative stories into one big ultimate cinema cow pie. Miley Cyrus. How do networks continually expect us to root for these unlikable, arrogant, over-entitled, spoiled teens anyway? I mean, Miley is self-absorbed, she throws tantrums, and is painfully materialistic. She dresses trashy, insults the intelligence of teens, writes one of the stupidest, most formulaic, manipulative songs I've ever heard. There's just nothing to like here. I just get so tired of these twisted morals behind Hannah Montana. This ugly underlying theme of, to be happy you must immerse yourself in consumerism and become a completely self-absorbed pop singer. I've gone on about Hannah Montana before in my top 10 worst Disney channel, so I'll leave it at, it's a Hannah Montana movie. Think of all the worst aspects of the Disney channel and then compile that into one movie. There's no forgiving this one, Disney. It's yet another shameless cash grab, and an attempt to manipulate a very fragile, moldable demographic. Shame on you, Disney. Shame. I hope for at least a little while not to cross paths with Miley Cyrus again. <laughs> Before we get to number one, I'd like to give a few quick honorable mentions. The Black Cauldron. I couldn't put it on the list purely because the animation in this one was beautiful traditional Disney style, and ideas like the Horned King are just wonderful fantasy. Cinderella 2. Sure, it's a bad, shoddy, tacky, direct-to-DVD sequel, but I have just always been in love with Jennifer Halle's voice. Are you sure this isn't just a dream? So I couldn't hate this movie, because she plays Cinderella. And Trez McNeil gives a lovely performance as always, too. Sure, they're working with zero writing, but they still make it pleasant enough. Lion King 1 and a half. Damn it, I wanted to make fun of this show. But you know what? It's actually really funny. All the way through this one, I was laughing. Timon and Pumbaa make this a really funny movie, and I actually really recommend it. Song of the South. This one gets a lot of flack, but I honestly didn't think it was that bad. Obviously the African Americans being slaves is an unpleasant product of the times, but aside from that, hey, we get zip de dee doo -dah from this movie. It's not good, but I don't think it quite deserves a place on this list. And with those said, here we go. And the number one worst Disney movie is... Chicken Little. 
No other Disney movie has had so much hate, so much mean-spirited cruelty, so many horrible messages, all aimed at an under-10 demographic. This is the only time I felt that same pointlessly black, cruel spirit in a Disney movie that I felt in Family Guy. Imagine a magical world run by backstabbing, shallow, cruel, heartless animals that actively bully, punish, and physically assault our main character. Now, to me, that sounds like a terrible idea for a Disney movie. But to add icing to that brown, shapely pile we're forming, they decided to make the father just as actively neglectful and cruel as the rest of the town. Child neglect, isn't that just charming? I mean, look at this. The freaking box is the main character mooning us. This movie just does everything it can to insult you. And on top of that, this movie is so pug-fugly. This was Disney's first attempt at a CG movie, and it is just hideous. As well as all the animals looking wrong somehow, the colours are all these strange dark tinges of puke. They're all these strange orangey greens and washed out browns. At least in movies like Black Cauldron, it was pleasant to look at. But Chicken Little has easily the most unappealing colour scheme I've ever seen in a Disney movie. Four minutes into the movie and the character's already been shunned and physically assaulted by the town. Why is he being treated like some sort of war criminal? What did he do, you ask? Mass arsony? Genocide? No, worse than that. He mistakenly claimed that the sky was falling. Okay, first off, why would an entire town actually believe that the sky was falling? Did no one just, I don't know, look up and say, oh wait, no it isn't. Secondly, why on earth would someone get bad publicity for the rest of their life for claiming that the sky was falling? The movie is then set a year later and the entire town is still abusing him. How the hell is this a Disney movie? I mean, the school teacher makes dodgeball games about ganging up on and hitting all the unpopular kids. So we get to watch helpless children getting the crap beaten out of them. Isn't that just lovely? No, get rid of the nice music. This is the nastiest Disney movie I've ever watched. Cars will actively attempt to run him over in the street. And I again would like to reiterate, this is a Disney movie. The jokes are all cringeworthy. None of them hit. It's the most stupid, cruel, ugly, and nasty boring, forgettable Disney movie I've ever watched. For Jeebus sake, don't show this one to kids. It has the worst messages I've ever seen in a Disney movie. Shun, attack, and abuse the unpopular, and praise the popular. I can tolerate Disney cheese. I can even sometimes tolerate their cutesy sappy moments and the tweeny cash grabs, but there was no excuse for something like this. I personally consider Chicken Little the absolute worst Disney movie of all time. But I had to look pretty hard to find these outright terrible Disney movies. With a few exceptions, Disney normally gives us fresh new ideas for stories, or a genius retelling of an old story. Disney has given us masterpieces that were so revolutionary for their time that they could have closed their company 50 years ago. But instead, they have been endlessly improving their art, growing with the times, and growing with our society. And I think they often manage to use movies to make the world that little bit brighter. So even if we get some crap occasionally, I'm so glad we still have Disney. Do you think I missed a few particularly bad ones? I know there's a few that didn't quite make the list, so feel free to let me know in the comments. And, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.